Hello, this is Domenico Composto again, and today we're going to draw a, uh, uh, an inflationary gap. We're going to create and eliminate an inflationary gap using the monetarist new classical model. So we're going to just make a note that we're using the monetarist model, also known as the new classical. And this model assumes uh, no government intervention. And we'll be creating and eliminating an inflationary gap. OK? So we have our x and y axis. And on the x axis, we remember to label it as real GDP. We're measuring the level of domestic production within an entire country. And on the y-axis, we're measuring the price level, average prices of goods and services in an economy. We're gonna draw our upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve, SRS1, and it intersects with our downward sloping aggregate demand curve, 81. And these two curves also intersect with the perfectly inelastic long run aggregate supply curve l r a s okay so the intersection of 81 and srs1 and lrs1 provides an equilibrium in the national economy setting a price an average price of goods and services at pl1 and we have real gdp output at yp y for income at full potential in a closed economy, we assume that income equals spending equals the value of output. And this is reflecting the potential amount of output in an economy when we achieve full employment of our factors of production or resources. So we're at point A. Okay, we're at point A. Now we can go back and look at uh, the 2000, you know, the period between 2004, 2005, 2006. And we noticed at that point that interest rates set by the central bank in the United States, the Federal Reserve, were very low. All right, so aggregate demand equals C plus I plus G plus net exports. And the Federal Reserve Bank, as a result of the terrorist attack in 9-11, September 11th, um, lowered interest rates to stimulate the economy. Uh, consumer confidence went down, business confidence was, was down, and as a result, the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates to encourage people to borrow and spend into the economy. So in 03, 04, 05, 06, interest rates were very low. So what were people doing? They were borrowing money and spending it, and in this case, they were buying homes, apartments. So consumption spending was rising in 2004, 2005, 2006. And as a result of all of this borrowing and spending and people feeling confident in the economy, businesses seeing increasing revenue, willing to hire more people, willing to expand, investment spending was also rising. So with an increase in consumption and investment spending, that is, as determinants of the aggregate demand, the aggregate demand curve was increasing from 81 to AD2. And that set a new equilibrium at point B, the intersection of 82 with short run aggregate supply one, increased the level of GDP from YP into Y inflation. And we noticed at that point that the unemployment rate was decreasing below the 5% long run average, perhaps it was going down to about 3%, all right? And as a result of all that increased aggregate demand, prices of goods and services on average were also rising to PL2. So since there was an increase in aggregate demand from 81 to 82, firms responded by increasing their quantity of supply. And in order to increase their quantity of supply, they had to employ more resources, more inputs, more factors of production, so they're employing more labor, more land, more capital resources to meet the increased aggregate demand. And we notice that the price level has risen to PL2, and uh, we're at point B. Now what happens? So resources are becoming scarce. Un uh, unemployed labor is getting close to zero. I mean, it's at 3%, but it's 
getting close to zero. So there's less and less available labor and perhaps land and capital in the economy. So as resources get scarce, as demand for resources by firms gets um, um, increased, uh, gets scarce, the resources become more valuable. And as a result, these resource prices begin to rise. So as firms, let's say construction companies are scrambling to uh, hire labor in the labor market and they're finding less and less available construction workers they are competing against other firms to get those construction workers so they're offering higher wages to get those workers to work for them as opposed to working for a competing construction company so wages begins to rise in the construction industry perhaps wages in other firms are rising because times are good people are spending into the economy they're confident Firms are seeing an increase in revenue, so they're competing also for labor. Since wages is a cost of production, costs begin to go up, so the SRES curve begins to rise. So it goes up to SRES 2. All right, costs of production are rising. Wages rising, perhaps rent, interest, we'll assume that at least one of the factors of production is fixed since we're in the short run and as a result of the increase in the cost of production firms have to begin to charge higher prices so again we see the price level rising at pl3 and we're at point c as the price level begins to rise we notice that the quantity of aggregate demand begins to decrease people can't afford these higher prices so the quantity of aggregate demand begins to, to decrease and as a result firms experience decreased revenue so they're going to be they're going to have to fire some resources like labor and unemployment falls um, increases again to five percent and we're at point c so we have created an inflationary gap and eliminated it uh, with no government intervention the free market operating on its own without the need of the government intervening again this is a, a an old ideology from the 1800s Matra's model does it have its applications today, but in any developed nation, uh, there is government intervention. So the Matra's model um, does not fully illustrate what is happening in an economy because there is government intervention. So let's um, quickly analyze this as we would on a paper one exam since we've drawn it. So as can be seen, we have a graph and we're labeling the on the x-axis real GDP. On the y-axis, we're measuring the average price of goods and services, which is the price level. We have a downward sloping aggregate demand curve labeled 81, which is equal to consumption spending plus investment spending plus government spending plus net exports. And it's downward sloping as a result of the wealth effect or the interest rate effect or the international trade effect. We have an upward sloping short and aggregate supply curve labeled SRAS1. Upward sloping because we assume that firms respond to higher Price levels by increasing the quantity of supply since the profit margins will rise, again, assuming profit maximization. And we have a perfectly inelastic long run aggregate supply curve, LRS1 or LRS. So where 81 intersects or is equal to SRS1, which is equal to LRS1, establishes an equilibrium at point A with a price level of PL1 and a quantity of real GDP at YP or full potential, or we're going to assume that unemployment in the United States is at 5%. As a result of low interest rates being offered by the central bank, the Federal Reserve in the United States, people begin to borrow and firms begin to borrow, and they spend into the economy. So consumption spending rises, investment spending rises, leading to aggregate demand to increase from 81 to 82. 82 now intersects with SRS1 creating a new equilibrium at point B, leading to a higher price level at PL2 and increasing the quantity of output or real GDP at Y inflation. Since there's increased aggregate demand, firms respond by increasing the quantity of their aggregate supply from YP to Y inflation. They begin to employ more resources like labor to satisfy the increased aggregate demand. Now we're at point B. And as a result of the scarcity of factors of production or resources, firms begin to compete against each other to acquire those resources and they begin to offer higher uh, wages or rent or interest. So they're offering higher wages 
Wages goes up, that's a cost of production. So SRS shifts up to SRS2, creating a new equilibrium at SRS2 equals 82 at point C, providing a price level at PL3 with real GDP at YP with unemployment uh, increasing to 5% again. Why? Because the higher price level at PL3 causes the quantity of aggregate demand to decrease from B to C or from Y inflation to YP. And again, we see that we have created an inflationary gap and in the Matras model, the market solves itself and it is eliminated through market forces.